Hey, we have more racing in store. Don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, we are going to bring you more race cars today. Today, we're going to be tackling a really simple project, but one that I think we can prove upon tenfold, the Matchbox Jaguar D-Type race car. It's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get right to it. Today we'll be restoring a Lesney Matchbox Jaguar D-Type race car. The D-Type was designed specifically to win the Le Mans 24-hour race. The car used an innovative monocoque construction that can still be seen in many of the supercars that are built today. Once I'm rid of the pesky posts, I can get a little bit of a helper and pop the base off of the body. I'm going to go ahead and drill the posts out so I can put a couple button head screws in it and I'm very happy that this time I have remembered to do it before applying the paint job. With the post drilled I can go ahead and tap out the holes and put the button head screws in to keep them nice and clean. While I'm doing this, this is a good time to tell you that this isn't going to be just a straight up restoration. I'm going to put decals on instead of stickers, and I'm going to do my clear coat. Now I know I'm kind of compulsive with the clear coat, but I just think certain cars deserve it, and this is one of them. I was never really a big fan of tapping out the post. It just kind of seemed like a difficult and superfluous step. But then I found this fantastic tap handle from Bright Vision. And it works so good and it's so effortless that it's really converted me into a guy who taps out my posts. I highly recommend you try it. It's super, super affordable and it works great. By putting the screws in now, not only can I protect the screw holes, but I can also make sure that they're going to seat deep enough to put this together properly when we get to that point. A little side benefit to putting the screws in early is that they're going to get paint when I paint the car body. And you know Marty loves a painted screw head, so what the hell. This Matchbox has the little metal gray wheels on it, and I actually think this is the first car I've done that's had these kind of wheels on it. It's time to get them off, so I will begin by grinding off the burr at the end of the axle using my little rotary tool.
warm liquid goo phase commencing. I used to love brushing the stripper onto the car so I could watch the paint bubble. But honestly, this is just as satisfying laying the car gently into the goo and watching it sucked down to the depths. Really love that. I've mentioned that I'm a slow builder, and so having the car sit in the citrus strip for a while isn't an issue for me. This car's been in the citrus strip for at least 24 hours, probably longer, and when I take it out, you can see it has done an amazing job. All you gotta do is give it a little bit of time to do its thing. So the car looks great, we can go ahead and take it to the sink, wash it up, dry it, and then we can start to paint. I do like my colors to be fairly true, but I'm not always so stressed out about it. I think the Tamiya X5 Green is close enough to British Racing Green that I really don't need to monkey with it. I think by monkeying with it, all I'm going to do is drag things out, waste a bunch of paint, and probably not get much of a better effect. So I'm just going to go straight Tamiya X5. I'm going to thin that down with a little bit of Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, and then I'll thin it down further to airbrush consistency using Tamiya X20. With everything mixed and thinned, I can go ahead and load up my paint cup, and get to laying the paint down onto the car body. Never monkey with a winner, and so I'm not going to here. I'm going to paint this the way I paint everything. I'm going to start with a tack coat, then a few medium coats, and finish it off with some nice wet coats. Even though I do plan to clear coat this, it's important that I get a nice, smooth, glossy finish as I want to put decals on it, and I don't want to get any silvering. I think it's looking awesome, and so I can go ahead and wrap it up, put it aside to dry, and once dry, we can then go ahead and throw some decals on it. As you can see, before I put the decals on it, you can see that it already has a beautiful, smooth, glossy finish to it. That's from putting the paint down the proper way. I still think it can look a lot better by putting clear coat on it, and also it will trap those decals in it and make it look amazing. So, I have my plan, I'm going to stick to it, so now it's time to get these decals on. I made these decals in my Alps printer. And I just soak them up in a little bit of water and slide them onto the car. I have to be honest here. While researching this car, I saw some beautiful versions of it and I thought about doing one of those. The biggest issue I had was not being able to find a decent wheel for this car because it is so small. And since I was going to be forced to use the same metal wheels that came on it, I decided to stick with a more traditional look. Now I can move down to the drill press to put the wheels back on. Marty's two nails was a fantastic innovation, but when he started using these nail sets, it was a game changer. 
If you have a drill press and you're using the nails, I highly suggest you get these nail sets because they are so much better. I know, right? It seems like we just got started and we're about done. The decals are dry, the clear coat is on and dry, the car looks amazing, the base has a new fresh satin black paint job on it, the wheels are cleaned and put back on, we're ready to button this sucker up. Fortunately for me, I already know that these screws are going to go in perfectly because I did them in the right order and tested everything before I got to this point. Well, here it is, the finished product. Why don't we take a close-up look at it and see what we ended up with. Well, there you have it, my Matchbox Jaguar D-Type, and I think it looks amazing. The shine on the paint is to die for. Very un-Matchbox-like, I'll give you that, and it's got decals instead of stickers, but I think it looks fantastic. Now, you'll notice, no driver. Well, my, that's my bad, okay? I, I gotta be honest, I screwed the pooch here. Um, I didn't realize there was two kinds of Jaguar D-types and drivers. So the driver I ordered and had on hand for a year, I go to break it out and find out it's the wrong one. So I've got a new one on order, and when it gets here, I'll uh, paint it tan and stick it into the car. But otherwise, this one is done, and I think it came out great. I hope you loved it too. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and click the little bell. That'll notify you anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I read everything that you guys put down there, including the very, very hurtful stuff. So, hey, you know, if that's your goal, I can take it. Anyhow, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this simple but beautiful little build. I had a lot of fun. Until next time, I hope you have an amazing, sparkly, fast kind of day. Till next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.